All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the DJ Greg podcast. I'm glad you're here. You know, when I come into the building every morning here at 8170, I ask my coworkers who I see for the very first time during the day, I ask them, hey, how you doing? And some of them will reply, oh, I'm just living the dream. And then I'll be like, oh my goodness. Well, today's guest here on the DJ Gray podcast is actually the dream itself. And I say that because she has a dream job and she knows what her purpose is. From Jenna Cully Events, this is Jenna Cully. How you doing, Jenna? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Did they call you JC? I mean... You are welcome to. I can't say my my husband is his name is Justin Cully, so everybody calls him JC. So <laughs> it's like it's like where's my love for JC? Right. Exactly. I know. <laughs> I anymore. Well, hey, I'm glad that you're on the show, and thank you for being a part of it. Really, I'm excited to have been asked. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, man. Anytime. Okay, let's deep dive right into it. All right, how did Jenna Cully get started? handling events? That's a good question. So I actually, um, I figured it out in college that I wanted to go into events. I was originally in journalism and um, now since I don't even watch the news, it's probably good I didn't go into that. Um, <laughs> but um, figured it out in college that I wanted to go into event planning, but there were no event planning courses really you know, then. So it was majoring in either business or in hospitality management. So I went the hospitality management route um, and went to UW Stout in Wisconsin and ended up landing a really great internship out in New York at a private um, beach yacht and sailing club and uh, got started in events through private clubs and learning how to do them from the venue side of things out in New York and worked out there for about four-ish years um, and then decided I wanted to come back to the Midwest and, and start something here uh, and where my roots are. And then I took a detour into nonprofit events for a while, worked for the Muscular Dystrophy Association as their executive director and then started my business uh, about the same time. And so wow. I was working my business and um, working full-time at, you know, for them doing multiple events and, and all the things. So I was all events all the time. Uh, and then eventually made the choice to, you know, take the leap and just be the entrepreneur and left MDA and haven't looked back. So it's been a, been a ride. <laughs> wow. Wow. And, and you worked in New York. That's where I'm originally from. How did you like New York? You know, it was, um, it was, I, I really liked it and I think it was perfect for that time period in my life, but I can't imagine living out and working the hours that I worked. I mean, I, I averaged like 80 hours a week in the busy season. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine doing that now as a mom, you know, and having that, that kind of pressure. Um, I also think uh, it was very, very good for me as a someone who grow, grew up as a Midwestern girl to go out to New York and learn how to be confrontational and not be offended by it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I remember being like, these people are so straightforward. I don't even know what to do. And now I've brought a little bit of that back here to the Midwest, which is good. Okay. Yeah. I, and, and, and for me, it was reverse, you know, coming in and, you know, kind of like, you know, who is this guy like always on the go and, you know, he's kind of like running up on me. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. And I, Work hard and play hard. <laughs> yeah. And I had to learn how to like slow down just a little bit. So, you know, quite the difference here, yeah. but we love the Midwest. Yeah. Nope, we, <laughs> right. We love, we love the, we love it here. Okay. So when you took the deep dive, I mean, what was the turning point into you taking that? Uh, I'm just going to go all in. Yeah, uh, it was a big leap of faith for this girl who really likes to plan. And um, I'm not going to lie, it was not, there were times where I went, oh, what did I do? You know, um, mm -hmm. but luckily I had a very supportive husband at the time. Um, he also was trying to build a real estate business. So we were entrepreneurs side by side. So we've been oh, working wow. together forever. 
<laughs> I knew. Um, although we both usually had more appointments and we're out of the house more than we are now. But um, but yeah, so we we both took side jobs and we were working, you know, part time. I worked part time actually at a bridal store to learn that piece of the industry too. Okay. I worked part time for a um, Northwestern Mutual insurance rep, like just pretty much whatever would help keep things afloat while I was building the business. But right. it, uh, did that for a few years and then finally was at a point where I could just be solely this, which was great. So, wow. How many years has it been? Uh, let's see. Um, 2000. Well, I started my business in 2012 and then I probably stopped having all the multiple jobs around 2014. So a couple of years it took me. Okay. To just... Okay. Well, great. Well, what, what, what was some of the, uh, earlier mistakes that you made maybe in starting the business or going through it and then how did you overcome those mistakes? yeah i think i think my earliest mistakes was not charging enough <laughs> <laughs> you know you when you're starting out you just want you, you well first of all i think you don't know your value right you think mm -hmm. i have that imposter syndrome of i don't know what i you know like i don't know what i'm doing even though i had the background right i had the background from working events um mm -hmm. I didn't charge enough. And I think you only have so many weekends to book, right? And as a planner, it's really hard to book back to back events. Um, I feel like it's, I, I've done it, but it's, it's not easy because of just all of the details that we have to um, have under control and keep track of and, and whatnot. It's a little, a little simpler for other um, people to like DJ, right? Like you guys can easily, you can do back to back events um, without, it causing too much strain uh, for us. It's a little harder. And so I didn't charge enough. And then I was like, Oh shoot. Okay. Even if I book out every weekend, I can't break even, you know, so it wasn't doing mm -hmm. my that. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I think it was just learning how to be a business owner and what that means, having all the multiple hats and like, oh, I not only am the marketing person, but I'm also the accountant and I'm also the person, you know, dealing with the clients and the vendors and the what, you know. Yes. Um, yep. You ran multiple hats. You're doing it all. Yeah. Yeah. Man, do you have a crew now or? Uh, yeah, well, I actually had, I had, uh, I had a full crew, mm -hmm. <laughs> COVID, um, so a lot of them are not currently with me, but I am just hiring a, an admin assistant back, which I'm super excited about. Okay. Um, and I do have a team of lead planners that are, you know, seasonal part-time, of course. So, uh, wow. but yeah, I have a team. I have three lead planners right now, and then a whole bunch of assistant planners that are very part-time. So they just you know, it's something they do usually on the side. Okay. But, yeah, okay. which is, is super fun too, to have a crew. It is, it is. You know, it takes a lot of, uh, of the, the stress and the other hats off that you wear, you know, yes. at times. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Uh, how, how much time does it go into planning an event or a wedding or a corporate party? How many hours do you think? It honestly, it so depends on the event, but I would say an average wedding. Um, I, I mean, it, it probably like if I if it's full service average wedding, I'm probably spending sixty to eighty hours on a wedding. You know, um, uh, just over time, right? All over right. time, um, and that's probably the average. There's plenty that are more intensive than that, and then there's you know if we're doing day ofs and and things like that. I mean, you're for, even for a day of mm -hmm. day ofs, right? Like we're doing a lot of work beforehand. Um, yeah. I would say even a, a day of, you're probably talking about 10 to 15 hours of time beforehand. Um, right. Just communicating with vendors, doing timelines, prepping, you know, yeah. Well, so, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And, and, then, and then when you are actually at the wedding itself, I mean, you're there, what? 10 hour, that's a 10 hour day too, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we actually set up our packages that we can customize how many hours we're there the day of, but we're rarely there less than, I mean, the least amount usually is eight, unless it's a super tiny, like right now we have some super tiny ones that we're doing with COVID. But, um, but I would say a very typical day for us is 12 to 14. We've done 18 hour days before. So oh, wow. 
the, so when you have a lot of setup and a lot of cleanup, you're there. there oh, you do the cleanup too? We will. Yeah. We'll do the cleanup too, which, yeah, we're work. I'm working on, on being able to hire more assistants that I stay till a certain point and they do the cleanup. So that's, that's next year's goal. Right. So, Cause an 18 happen. hour day, you just done. You're spent. Yeah. It usually takes me a couple days to recover. <laughs> right. And, and then, and then, like you said, we're doing back to back. There was like no way after a 12 to 18 hour day to go back into another venue and start all over. You know, yeah. that, that takes a lot to recharge the brain. It's like, okay, who am I dealing with now? You know? Yeah. Now I, I, I kind of, I have the um, policy with being able to have multiple lead planners. I try to give us no more than two weddings per month depending on the level of involvement. If they're more like mid tier to full service planning, I don't want my leads to have more than two weddings per month because I really feel like our clients deserve that attention leading up to their day and not right. just shuffled in um, with all the other events. If it's more day ofs, um, we can do, you know, we can do three or four. You could do one every weekend for a day of, but uh, right. if it's more than that, we need, we really need to focus, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's all on you. Yeah, you know? yeah, it really, yeah. really is. And then you have to convey that out, like you said, to all the vendors and and make sure that they're all on the same page. And we often and, say we have two clients. We have our clients, our actual clients, and right. we have a vendor list because our vendor list is what makes us look awesome, right? Like you right. doing your job awesome, and we recommend you. Makes us look awesome. That's right. We like to keep our vendors happy, and um, and we like to make sure that they're taken care of in any situation, too. And there there have been times where there's conflicts between vendors and clients, and I've actually said to the client, the vendor is right. Like it's they mm. we have to go with what they're saying. They are they are correct. So it's um, it's an interesting balance being an event planner because you really yeah. are balancing both sides because, yeah because how do you tell them you know on a very important day because the client is i'm, I'm guessing they just want what they want mm -hmm. and, and 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 for you to say okay you can get what you want but let's do it in about a different way you know Ooh, okay i i don't i don't envy you at all <laughs> <laughs> It's a delicate dance. But yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's like playing a bad song. It's like, I don't think this one is going to work over. You know? Yep. Yeah. You know, you touched on COVID a little bit. Let, let's, let's get into that. Because, well, you know, with COVID, it put everything on, like, hold. Everything on freeze. It did. What was, like, some of the adjustments that you had to make? And, you know, how did you handle it? Yeah. We, um we've had to make quite a few adjustments uh, in things that we can do. And the hardest thing, I think the hardest thing for me has been having to say no to clients for certain things because um, we just legally can't do them or it's not safe for us to do them. Um, and it's random little things like pinning on a boutonniere right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we're right here, right? I, <laughs> whoever we're pinning that boutonniere on. Um, so it's been adding strange new things to our day of bags, like gloves and masks and temperature takers and all of those kinds of things. So, um, but the other piece is, is again, it's, it's being that middleman between clients and vendors. And sometimes I'm actually educating vendors on how we need to be doing this so that everybody's staying safe. And that's a new one for me. I didn't know that I was going to become a, you know, a professional that teaches people how to stay healthy at an event, like not right. Not cool. <laughs> so it's been an interesting year for sure. And, um, and we are also now experts in postponing weddings. So <laughs> <laughs> we know how to do it pretty easily. So um, it's, yeah, that's been a journey figuring all of that out but yeah i mean i mean this has really been like a, a learning experience and we're all learning as we go we are yeah but we, but we all still standing too yeah you yeah. know which is great which is, is great i think it shows the strength in the community the events community in the twin cities that we're all of us are 
that's still here. That's right. Absolutely. So, so when we were locked down, I mean, was there like any binge eating or binge watching? Well, with three children, we, we, we binge watched a lot of Disney and okay. Lippy. That's a big one in our house right now, but, and other things. But uh, for me, I think it was, um, what did I binge watch? Oh, New Amsterdam. I got into that one because I was like, I don't know. I've never had time to watch this before. So here we go. Right. And, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, no, I, I really, um, I actually started running again during, um, uh, during lockdown, mostly so that I could run away from my house. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just need to run away, literally, <laughs> for just a little while. I'll come back. I like that. <laughs> I'm running away from the house. Like, mm -hmm. I gotta go, man. Good. I, I actually convinced my husband to start running too because I was like, I said to him, I was like, you get to run away. And he was like, I'm in. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Big shout out to the hubby for running with you. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, get some of that, you know, get some of that anxiety out. You yes. know, with, with also, you know, balancing of, of being an event planner, a business owner. And, and, and mom too, because that's nonstop. That's a twenty four seven job. Twenty four seven, yep, never stops. Okay, so what was like the binge eating though? What, what were you binge eating? I'm trying to remember. What did I binge eat? Um, oh, uh, my go to is popcorn or chocolate. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's probably what I was grabbing the most of at that okay, time. Popcorn, chocolate. Okay, okay, we can get down like that. You know, her, Hershey's is a good thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's a great thing. <laughs> so Jenna, what you know, what does the future look like now that you know we, we're dealing with COVID, we, we're getting by that, we're learning how to like navigate through that. What does like 2021 and beyond look like for you and your business? Yeah. Well, I think 2021 actually looked a lot like 2020 was supposed to, because we had so many <laughs> postponed. Um right. we're we're adding in quite a few a few weddings and I actually just um, was able to rehire a lead planner that used to work for me years ago um, because okay. she got furloughed and is now available again. So my benefit, right? That's uh, right. You, That's uh, right. Grab her while you can. Mm -hmm. It's great though. So we um, so we we just added an, another lead planner because we are getting a bunch of inquiries for next year. So that's that's great. Um, and then beyond that, we're also looking at 2022, but overall, I mean, I, we've really looked at this year, I've had the time, which is great learning how to streamline things and, um, make them even more efficient for us, uh, to be able to take on more clients. So we're, um, so we are set up, we are ready to go for 2021 and 2022. And then eventually down the road, um, my goal is actually to open up multiple locations in different cities. So expand beyond the Twin Cities and um, oh. go that route. But we're that got pushed off a little bit with COVID. So we're gonna we're gonna just recover and then we'll we'll look back at that. Right on. I, I like your idea of expansion though. You're thinking big. Yes. Sorry. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No. Big shout out. Okay. Uh, also, uh, really quick, what's your definition of success? Hmm. That is a good question. Um, I'd have to say my definition of success is having, it's, it's impossible to have a complete work-life balance, in my opinion. Like there's seasons, right? Mm -hmm. There's seasons where I'm really focused on family and there's seasons where I'm really focused on um, my business. But I feel like when I can have, feel like I can have quality time with my family and also have quality time with my business, that's really when I feel successful. You know, um, it's not about the same quantity in both, mm -hmm. but it's the quality. And for a while I, I um, when I was, I had three babies in three and a half years. So there was a, a, very focused family time for me. Mm -hmm. um, and when I started to get out of that, I felt really out of balance with not having worked enough. You know, I wasn't working enough. I wasn't using this part of my brain. Right. And, um, and once I got back into this, I, I really found that balance and that groove again. 
And honestly, it just, it made me a better, better mom too, because I was coming back to them refreshed rather than like, yeah. <laughs> right. Frazzled. Pull my yeah. hair out and you're <laughs> along with it. So that's kind of my definition of success. It's not about, you know, work-life balance as quantity of time, but just that I have quality in both. Uh, I love it. I love it. And if they want to get in contact with you for Jenna Cully events, how do they do that? Yeah, you can go to jennacullyevents.com. Um, and you can also find us uh, on Instagram at Jenna Cully events or on Facebook, Jenna Cully events. All right. Well, well, Jenna, I want to thank you for your time. I know you got to get back to the fam <laughs> and, and that lead, you know, I want yeah. you to go out there and crush it. And, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate it. You are welcome. I appreciate being asked to be on. Yeah, man. You got a lot to offer. I want the world to know, you know, th this is all about plugging in and letting people know about your business and what you do. So keep living that dream. I will. Thank you. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.